Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Various for another Voice of Yamato. Me and Various, we, we always like to talk about the LEC. Well, I like to talk about the LEC. I invite him. I think Various is just polite <laughs> enough to, to, to accept, to, to, to use his, his little free time that he has to, 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 to spend that talking with me. I have loads of free time, bro. It's totally <laughs> fine. It's, it's just, you know, the way to look at it is like he's sacrificing his Baldur's Gate time to true, be here. True. Which, you know, as my close friend, I'm more than happy to do. Lovely. Are you excited for the PlayStation release? I did, I mean, you mentioned to me the PlayStation release, but honestly, I thought it was already out on PlayStation. I don't know what it's going to be like playing on a controller, but I'm down to give it a go. Bro, the trophies in that are going to yeah, be insane. Yeah, yeah. I don't even want to think about it, bro. I don't... Oh, it gives me anxiety, even considering yeah, what sort yeah. of trophies they're going to put in. Because at least like Enhanced Edition, Baldur's Gate, those trophies, that's just insanity. Like that is like probably <laughs> one of the most rarest uh, trophies of all time. But also at the same time, it's like the the base game is giga hard in Baldur's Gate 1. And then mm. there's a trophy to buy to play on a level that is higher than Tactician. So there's like a, it's like hell mode, god mode. It's like oh, some, some, some okay. ridiculous name that just, you know, is, is meant to spook you. And all creatures, all monsters just have 250% more health, which is nonsensical if you've played. That is Baldur's nonsensical. Like you need to yeah. cheese your way. You need to cheese the shit out of that game. But I can say from experience, uh, it is like playing Divinity Original Sin on PlayStation. Yeah. That was like really, really smooth. Uh, so I'm imagining oh. it's like the same thing. It's like it should okay, be really, cool. really good. Uh, I liked okay. it. I liked it. Now, Baldur's Gate, yeah, I can okay. talk forever about Baldur's Gate. Yeah, bro, we got to be careful. Forever. We got to be careful. It's, it's, it's yeah, dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It really is. We need our own gaming podcast that isn't, you know what I mean? Totally. Right. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. You know, we just, we just call it the Platinum Podcast. And we're just like, <laughs> we, we converse, we correspond about what we've been cooking like in, the, in, in the background. I, I have like, like phases when I play PlayStation and not no PlayStation. Bro, I'm the same, man. I'm completely the same. Like I, I had a Final Fantasy 16. Yeah, yeah. I was like attached to mm. my PlayStation. You know, it was just every day, log in, play, 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 play. Yeah, yeah. And then like, I took a short break for some reason and I haven't been able to touch it since. Yeah, yeah. No, and it's I'm, just like my, my gaming priorities shift all the time, you know? Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm for sure with you. It's, it's been like also, it's like I have to play Final Fantasy 16 with my girlfriend because like uh, Final Fantasy is like her, her thing. It's like our... Oh, yeah. Our, like, no, that sacred, makes sense. Sacred thing, right? And then it's yeah. like every every evening when we usually have time, I've just been coaching LCS or doing some other dumb, right. dumb shit and just been busy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then now it's like I don't feel that same fire for the game, you know? It's like... The, the, fair, the way it comes and goes, that passion for something is, is, is very random. Man. It's very I random. And you think when off season comes around, you actually have time to play. That that's what you'll do. And then you end up spending all that time doing something else. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I have spent like my whole week just grinding league before, you know, and I was like, this isn't what I wanted to do, but somehow this is what <laughs> I ended up doing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, for sure. I, I, like, I remember it's, 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 it's nice when you find that game that you can go right giga goblin mode in, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah, I've done that with Final Fantasy 14. I did it with Lost Ark when it was on the Russian server. It's like I just played yeah. on the Russian server and I was like full goblin mode, you know. It's like yeah, stay man. up till the sun comes up, you know, in the off season. <laughs> but I think I think I'm past that. I feel way too shit when I do like all nighters now. Like my my week is. I'm weird. the same, man. I'm <laughs> I you you uh, I'm 30. Right. I don't look 30. I don't feel 30, but I am. And like I've got a PT now right yeah, to try yeah. and help me get back into shape mm -hmm. and he was just like you need to sleep just more and i was like but don't you sleep less when you get older and he's like i mean yeah but you're 30 not 80 like <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and i was like yeah i probably should sleep more but yeah like i i think i'm on like i went to bed at 3 a.m last night okay. woke up at about 11 right oh, that's decent, um yeah. Yeah, and you think it's decent, but my body's like, bro, like we could do with another hour or two, you know? <laughs> eight hours. Bro, eight yeah, hours you'd is... think, again, like my body is not, it's not on the hour, it's the half hours. I okay. think I thrive better if I have eight and a half hours sleep compared to eight hours. Okay. Because it's that whole hour and a half cycle thing. I yeah, think yeah. I function better on the six hour mark or like the seven hour mark versus the eight hour. I think. Okay. Like seven and a half is usually where like, but for me, that's perfect. Like seven and a half. Yeah, that sounds like a good number. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. Seven and a half is neat. I remember, like, um, just... I, I use this thing called Aura Ring. Have you heard about it? Uh -uh. So it's like a ring that basically it uh, measures my heart rate and my uh, like uh, uh, like the oxygen rate in my blood. So it can yeah. really like accurately me measure how efficient my sleep was. 
And it basically tells, okay. lets me know, it's like, yo, today is a, it's a day to rest. And basically like through the heart rate variability that they measure throughout the night, they can kind of accurately determine how useful your sleep was and when you need to rest more and when you need to, uh, when it's a good day to, to get active. And I've, I've used this thing for like six months now. And now it's like, it's pretty in tune with me. You know, it's like, uh, like cool. at least for me, like measuring my sleep keeps me a lot more honest about it because otherwise, yeah, I'm down to my three, four hour sleeps. And uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, bro. I saw one day you did LPL into L was it LCK into LPL into LCS or it was, it was one of those orders, but you did all three in a day. And I was like, that boy must have. <laughs> he must that must have been a long one you know no definitely it's like now 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 i've gotten used to those days a lot more but in the past it was like the yamato live reaction <laughs> oh, i like, love that i love <laughs> that. the yamato cam yeah 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 yeah. Uh, if i co-streamed bro that would be me most mornings you know like hey sure. everyone we're here for the lpl finals um we're taking a nap i'll see you in game two <laughs> like i, I couldn't <laughs> no nah, bro i couldn't no it's it's, it's like legit i think on the weekends, it's like 8 a.m. LCK. And between yeah. the games, I legit just like, I put my chair down and I just take a nap. <laughs> and then I, I just wake up to this Champions Select sound and I'm just riding. And those 15 minute yeah. naps, they, they are bang. They have <laughs> lifesaver, bro. <laughs> Always got taught, if you're driving long distances and you're tired, you pull over, you t you no longer than 10 to 20 minutes. Okay. And then you, you keep going. Cause that 10 to 20 minute nap, <laughs> will give you more energy than if you'd actually like step for an hour. If you sleep for an hour, you're going to be worse. It's going to be worse. Yeah, it makes sense. But I, the I, naps I, of the game. I remember hearing about like some marathon runner, like like these ultra marathons where they like run for days straight. And uh, yeah. the, 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 there was this woman who was like the world champion. I don't remember her name, but apparently like uh, they have like handlers that like run with you to make sure that your vitals are good and they like run with you and then they switch. Oh, wow. Off, right? Okay. And yeah. uh, at, at one point, she just said, I, I'm way too tired. I need to like take a nap. And this is like after like she has ran maybe like for 50 hours straight. And then she's yeah. like, I want to take a nap. I want you to wake me up in like legit like 10 minutes. And then basically she went to sleep and then she woke up and then she said, why the fuck didn't you wake me? And then the other person, the handler was like, you've been asleep for 40 seconds. And yeah, then, and then she's like, I feel amazing. <laughs> and yeah. then she started running again. <laughs> You've been asleep for 40 seconds. <laughs> again, one minute of sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, wow. What the hell? That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> that sleep is sleep is unique. Like something that blew my mind, Velius, was yeah. th this 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 simple sentence about sleep is that the only hu like the only animal that willingly sacrifices sleep human beings humans no other animal does it really it's like cats dogs any animal you can think of they prioritize sleep so heavily true have you ever had cats they sleep all day bro. i've they do yeah they domesticated cats just spend a lot of time sleeping same you know, with babies, lions bro the, same with lions they sleep bro they sleep yeah <laughs> babies are the same they just sleep bro they, they are so smart <laughs> it's yeah <so> central. <laughs> <laughs> Hey like man, a, let's just get rid of capitalism and I'm down to sleep more. You know what I mean? Like I'm down, down. I remember there was, there was this phrase from this man who lived to be like 130 and it's like, yeah. hey, do you have any tips? And then he said, sit like a turtle and sleep like a dog. And it's like, no, I knew what the fuck he meant, but it's starting to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nevertheless, uh, LEC brother. Mm, LEC. <laughs> Which best of five is the most exciting to you, brother? The, the uh, Mad XL. Mad XL. How yeah. come? Because I think it's the only one where there isn't a clear favorite to me. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if I understand, if I understand our playoffs properly, right? So, the higher seed from the upper bracket will move into the lower bracket, right? Uh, basically, so, you mean the, the the versus SK? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Right. So, if if BDS somehow beat G two, right, then G2 would play against SK, right? Because G2 is coming in as yes, a first yes. seed. If Mad beat XL, because XL, are they the fourth seed? I have this feeling that XL is actually coming in as the fourth yes, seed. Yes, yes. So basically, if Which XL BDS that, win, then XL faces Fnatic. Like yeah, if XL if, loses. If, yeah, if XL lost, they'd actually play against Fnatic. And that would also be a super interesting matchup. Yep, yep. Um, but uh, the reason why I think XL Mad is uh, the most interesting is because it's the one that I I wouldn't be surprised if Mad won. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
while my expectations aren't that Mad will win, my expectations are that XL should come in as the favorites. I'm basing a lot of that off of like their most recent performances, right? Mm. Um, and I think that I would start from Mad's perspective, and we can talk more about them. But when I think about their split, um, originally I was going to cast this game, and then I ended up getting swapped to the other day. So I did all this prep for XL Mad. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but when I looked back at when Mad were doing well, um, Chasey was doing very well. Uh, and the thing that initially inspired this was I went back and I watched Mad versus Fnatic, which was their last best of three before they got knocked out, where Oscar Rin and Solo Chasey top on Orn. I don't know if you remember that game. Yes, yes. Uh, but it was, uh, I was like, what is going on? So I then like compared Chasey. Well, I didn't do it. I asked the stats team to do it, but <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> I'm not going to take that credit. But uh, I looked at like Chasey's performance in um, this split compared to the previous two splits. And like you look at the difference in jungle proximity, and basically like El Yoya just didn't go top at all this split. And you kind of look back at the previous seasons, like Chasey got more resources uh, as a carry. He was able to get out of lane stronger, and then whenever he was getting out of lane stronger, he was just having better performances. Yes, but by yes. being left isolated, like it feels like he's had a really difficult split. Um, but I think that this then kind of spurred a, a greater thought within me, which then me like, has the mid jungle synergy of Mad just kind of disappeared? Has it collapsed? Because I think that when you think about Niski teams in general, uh, and and you can probably speak about this from your own experience. Whenever I think of Niski teams, he is the type of player that like he gets a gank mid, right? Enemy mid burns flash or they get a kill, and then he just roams, mm -hmm. right? He uses that priority, he uses that advantage to find opportunities to attack sides. And um, attacking top is one method that they can definitely take advantage of. He's been known to play through bot, but he's a person that typically doesn't like to live in his lane. He's one that usually likes to attack sides. And I feel like that that form of mad, we just haven't really seen at all this split. Um, and it's crazy to think that they're currently on a nine game loss streak. And, and you mentioned it to me yesterday that their, their last win was against a G2 game that they should have lost. Yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, that was the whole Caps Nico game where he got a little bit too crazy and then they ended up throwing that game in the bot lane. Um, and so, like, I just, I, a part of me feels like that MSI broke mad. Their synergy is not the same. They just can't get on the same page. And while there are individuals, like, I still think Kazi is playing individually very well. I think Niski still actually had a very good series against Fnatic. He was actually doing about as much as he individually could do. Uh, the team just, feels like that it's lost all of its synergy um but then within the gap that they've had what we've had a four week maybe five week gap like it wouldn't surprise me if they found some form of formula to rectify that synergy and then come in and look much stronger than they did you know which is why it's a part of me sister and things i wouldn't be surprised if mad did do something crazy and were able to beat uh exile and a best of five yeah, I, I, I think that's 100% fair. I think look at like looking at Matt, like I remember, like I did the, the all pro voting. I did it like while I was streaming and I, mm -hmm. I showed, I put Chasey as my second rookie of the year and and people were very, yeah. very, very surprised. But for me, like I, I remember the winter and the spring and Chasey was amazing. Yeah, Even he was. like, like he, he was a really good case hunter, was the only top laner that got away with playing Jace, besides maybe Photon that one time with the, with the Jace Sejuani game that they played yeah, yeah, in the regular yeah. season where he, where he smashed. But generally speaking, Chasey was, was like a force to be reckoned with. He, he'd really leveraged his gold super, super well and was one of the few case hunters that like really like 1v9 games uh, when, when he got ahead. And uh, definitely there were games where Elioia was hyper-focused on just making sure that he dove top or because it seemed like Elioia and the bot lane really didn't believe in one another. And there were yeah. cases where it was like, and the bot lane was ending straight up. It's like, I remember that one game where they played like Varos Brom against Samira Jarvan and they like threw the whole lane. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah, the, their jungler is like passing into top because he assumes the lane phase is going to be good, which it should be. And then they just throw the whole lane and there was there was many issues there, but they managed to of course make it all the way to to, to the finals. Um, I I also think in the context of having those three four weeks, it's like it's it's going to be interesting to see how Excel actually managed to to maintain because I think their biggest edge has been how well they landed on both of the patches that uh, mm -hmm. the regular season was on, like thirteen thirteen. Oh, yeah. 
they landed super, super well. They played the right mid laners. They were fast, fast on the rumble. Uh, Limit is like born to play Alistar and, and, and Rel, I feel like. Uh, so this was like how, how the patch slotted into what they were as players and how they yeah. figured out the patch was a massive edge. And I think that could be a massive edge also coming into the first day now. Uh, Mad Lions in the past, when they succeeded super, super well, they were also very formulaic in terms of how they approached the, the one, two, three picks. It was like always like Vi, yep. Gragas, Rock, and Zaya, uh, Vi, yep. X. And then, and then it's like when Vi was out, it pivoted into other angles where they play like Gragas, Jace. They had that um, formula about them. And the question is, can can Excel then continue this, this pattern of them like executing well, uh, super, super well on, on, on metas? And will Mad Lions figure out their, their own identity? I feel when it comes to Mad, the, the key thing for me always when they're underperforming, I think that that's when Elioya and Hilia are underperforming. I think that, yeah. that Kazi, Niski have been fairly consistent throughout the whole year, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. And... Um, I think I mean, they Niski did have some super bad games this split. I seem to remember an Annie game. I forget who it was against, where he went like zero and like six or something, and it just it wasn't his game. But aside from a couple of those odd ones, I would I would largely agree. Yeah, mm. it could be. I, I I think a lot of those losses in regular split, I'm kind of blind to them when I think of of, of my. That's fair. Uh, That's fair. So, so 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 maybe there's something that uh, I've 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 forgotten. So, but. In general, I feel like if, if Hilly and Elioya can figure out how they want to approach the game and how they want to, to impact the map, I think this is where Mad Lions finds their ceiling in terms of their play and also their floor. Um, I think yeah. I think if, if, if these two players... Because still, it's like I had this take on, on Euphoria that if who has the highest chance of upsetting G2 out of the remaining teams? I would still mm -hmm. say without seeing... Like, I, I, I think... If I imagine a team needs to win three games out of five against G2, I still mm -hmm. think Mad Lions has the highest potential, so I need to put them as the team that has the highest really? chance as well to, to beat a G2. Because I don't see wow. a, a world where the other teams actually do it. Well, my bet would have been on Fnatic on that question. Okay. But uh, yeah, no, but I see your argument. You know what I mean? I think that's the important thing. It's, it's, um, it's the... Is it the two-sided coin? Is that a good metaphor or an analogy where like the ceiling is is high very clearly for Mad Lions, at least domestically, yes, yes. but uh, the floor is also incredibly low. <laughs> yes, yes. And it seems to be uh, so fragile as well because like when yeah. they're at their floor, they're playing at their floor and they don't seem to be like snapping out of it, you know? Yeah. Because at least yeah, like yeah. The, the series against G2 or against... Um, BDS, it's like when they had to go to five games, there was still like a lot of hopeful things in those games. While in their more, most recent losses, it was like, damn, this is this is kind of ugly, huh? Yep. There's, there's yeah, like yeah. nothing to, to hold on to. I agree. Because the other side, right? I think XL have already like done everything they could against G2. I, I can't imagine them do more. And then Fnatic, I think the issue with Fnatic is that they are too similar to what G2 is in terms of how they approach the early game. I think Fnatic mm. relies heavily on getting ahead. And I think that Trimby is not a strong player when he's playing from behind. I and agree. I and I believe that Podlane will would be so contested in a BO5, Fnatic versus G2, but I think that G2 would just execute better. And I think this is where Trimby and Razor can't enact their pressure in the same way. And I think that mm. they would slowly suffocate um, against the G2. Yeah, I mean, you touched on a lot there, but I'll focus in on the XL part mm. um, so that if we want to move on from this matchup, we can. But uh, X XL is is still an enigma to me. They, okay. um, they, they. Whenever I watch this team, I feel like that they don't have any genuinely clearly defined strengths. Okay. But at the same time, I sit there and think that like, but they're, they're, I think that when you talked about like their reads on the meta and their understanding of like what's good and how to make it work, that is where I really attach XL success this split. Because I kind of look at their most recent played six Maokai games, four Sejuani games in playoffs, four Na, three Rumble, four Azir, three Jace, four Zaya, three Callista, three Alistair, three Nautilus. You know, like they clearly had these picks that 
they were confident in and I think like limit I mean he's the one I actually rated second all pro he was Same. the only XL individual that I actually thought was kind of like within the top three conversation but everyone else like I didn't think when you looked at the whole split Oduamne was in that conversation personally um, I, I sat there and I thought that like Peach while he did have his strengths like his regular season actually wasn't the most impressive. He progressively got better and by groups he was very strong. But also I think a jungle pool in Europe is very strong. Abadage, like his laning was not very good yeah, for yeah. a lot of the season, you know, especially when you compare him to some of our top mid laners. The fact that he did get a solo kill on caps to his credit, you know, he had his moments and he definitely had a strong performance. He also had his carry games. Like, I remember his Jace where he was just 1v9ing. I don't want to take anything away from him as a player. But that's kind of like how I see XL. It feels like that they don't have a very clear formula that they leverage every single game. It feels like that either it's they make a good map movement or they punish a mistake or they set up for an objective well or they just have a very good draft. It feels like that there are a lot of different elements that like contribute to their success and it kind of varies rather wildly. And that's kind of why... I wasn't surprised when G2 stomped them. I was very surprised when they went to the full five games against yes, G2. Um, but then when the 3-0 happened, I was like, oh, this is actually what I was expecting because when you have like no clear identity against G2, the G2 just kind of pushes their identity onto you and then you end up just being forced to submit to it. Uh, so it felt like that in that moment, XL just kind of collapsed. But it's that's why I still have a difficult read on XL. A part of me sits there and thinks that, like, sure, they should come in as the favorites in this best of five. Like, they've showcased that they have a pretty good understanding of the meta. I read 13 14, um, and I didn't think it was too crazy. I haven't done much research into 13 15 yet. That was going to be my project for, for tomorrow ahead of the casts. Mm. But um, do, do you think that there will be a significant change to the way that the game is played? I think. Bot lane, I think support will largely be the same with Alistar, Rael, Rakan, and maybe the mm -hmm. addition, like Braum will be played for sure. I think Milieu has some angles, Leona. Uh, I, I yeah. think maybe we'll see like Lissandra into Rakan. That's something that I've, I've, I've seen a lot where people just Oh, support. Lissandra support. support, yeah. yeah. Ah. Lissandra with Aftershock, you W Rakan in the air, you cancel yeah, yeah, the spell, yeah. and, uh, and then you just like it. pressure dive because you can push the lane, and like Lissandra has really good base spells already. So it's like yeah. you play like Calista Lissandra and you just like stack a wave, dive, start with W, Aftershock, and then it's like oh. uh, pretty easy and guaranteed. It's pretty, pretty, pretty neat, honestly. Very, very neat. Yeah, uh, sounds good, yeah. AD, I think, is is, is all, uh, mostly the same. Uh, like Kaiser's a little bit lower prior, especially here in Europe, because people like to like be like contest through bot. Mid, mm -hmm. I think that's where the biggest like change up might be because a lot of mid laners like spamming Nafiri. They're spamming... Like some late mid laners are playing Aatrox mid, some mid laners are playing like a lot of Yon oh. mid. And I think this is just uh, for the Talia buff. Like Talia got buffed. And then through that, I think uh, like Sejuani got nerfed. And then uh, yeah, Maokai should still be strong, one. I think. I think the Sejuani nerf is heavier than the, than the Maokai nerf because Maokai lost 40 damage on Q for minions, but it's just a bonus damage. And I think it's clear as like similar. So I think it's okay. Yeah, Sejuani yeah, like lost yeah. 10 damage on the first and on the second. So she'd just lose a lot of damage in general. And her clear yeah. wasn't like turbo in the first place. I think may jungle mid is where we see the most new things. And then for top lane is just addition of Aatrox, right? So I think a lot of things yeah. would, would largely be the same as my, my estimation and, and, and my prediction. I think in reference to what you mentioned, right? G2 versus XL, I think what they did in that series where they just decided to make sure that Limit doesn't get to play Rel or Alistar. Yeah, bro, it was big. Yeah, you're right. Super, super, That's super big. big. And that should be like, like Mad Lions should look at that series and Excel should also look at that series to like expand beyond that, right? Because I think that would yeah. be crucial. I think- That's such a great point, actually. Now that you kind of mentioned that, it's like, you think about Limit as a player throughout his career, he's always like, she always gives off this this like leader type presence. He's probably the guy that in a team fight is like, I'm engaging, I'm the one starting the fight. And you have to imagine that takes a lot of responsibility away from someone like Peach. And then you have all these veterans around you that then just kind of know what their responsibility is in the fight. But the second you take away that ability to lead in and actually start those fights, it probably impacts how you like play the entire game, right? Like so. Blood, he played Pike, bro. Like. <laughs> He was, yeah. he was, he was deep. <laughs> I remember, he yeah, was, I remember. He was so, so deep uh, in, in, in the rabbit hole, you know, because like a lot of the, the, the bands uh, were, were flying in, in his direction. It's like um, they did the, the, 
they did made the decision to drop uh, like four five right on um, yep. on support, which I think something that this is probably something that they need to change. They need to like compete for Raka not to lose early in the draft yep. uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's like looking back at those games. Uh, yeah, they're they're just dropping support and then they end up on like brown pie cases. So this is probably something they can change up. But for me, like what what I like about EXO, I think the early games are very uh, inconsistent. But I think as 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 mid and 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 late game approaches, I think just limit and Patrick they move on the map so so well. It's like limit a- limit has such good understanding of where he needs to be and. Yep. And the way he they connect with jungle, I think they're always taking over river uh, uh, appropriately. They're placing the right vision, and I think that Abedag and Odoam now adjust to that super super well. So I feel like always when mid game and late game comes, they are very good at stabilizing. And then uh, in in some shape or form, I feel like they their mid to late game is ca- kind of almost like a a better variant of what BDS was in was in spring. Oh, that's fair. So BDS was very, very cookie cutter in the way where they made sure that they were there on the Drake and they didn't care how much they sacrificed on side. But I yeah. feel like XL uh, managed side just a little bit better, uh, even though Doamne uh, occasionally gets caught on side. Um, yeah. I think just Limit and Patrick, I feel like they are the soul of this team. Like I think they are so, so sharp. Because I think fair, an additional layer of the meta shift coming into 13 13. I think some of the other ADs struggled super, super hard in understanding what they should be playing after Zaya's out of the picture. Because yeah. Aphelios got nerfed right, and then all of a sudden, no other didn't look like the same player, right? That first best of best of three that they played, they had like that Zeri case, and they played like Zeri yes. Soraka or something. Yep. And it's like, yep, they, yep, they yep. didn't look like the same players at all. And yep. then I think, um, uh, like, Patrick willing to play the Kalista, can play the Ezreal, Varos, like they, they they hit the ground running there. So I think just Excel's bot lane. I, I put them second best uh, in, in my all pro voting. Uh, oh, damn. Okay. Both of them. Like I, I didn't think Noah and Trimby, like Noah and Trimby had a fantastic regular season. But then after that, I think that they were very, very quiet when it comes to the BOs, uh, BOs because a lot of their wins, I think, was just humanoid on Jace reaching like breaking points and just becoming monster strong and uh, like Razork having good games together with him and then Oscarini also having pop-up games. But I think that their bot lane was, was very quiet in, in, in their endeavors in, in, in the playoffs. Mm. Unless yeah, was I was surprised Noah to see, I was surprised to see Noah top three. I think my top three was, um, I had Hans, I think I had Flackhead second and then I had Patrick third. Okay. And then I put Noah in what would have been, I guess, fourth or fifth, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's a fair assessment, man. Like their bot lane, a part of me sits there and think like, I think I just don't remember XL as much during the regular season. Like, I feel like that I just, cause I don't recall Patrick and Limit being that, like where I started to notice their presence was in the group stage in the playoffs, okay. you know? So it, it makes me want to like, did, maybe I just didn't focus enough on like, what they were doing during the regular season but the way you describe it like i can now think of all these games i always think about those first heralds that bot lane's always there yeah, yeah you know what i mean like it's it's a really good it's a good spot and i think that you make a very valid point and uh it's like limited yeah, I, regular season was not was not the same player as as the meta landed on the rail and the alistars that that i can say yeah. for sure like he had some rakan blunders like him on rain supports mm-hmm. wasn't wasn't as clean but that 3-0 yep. week that XL slammed down, I, that was like the Azir Zaya and Patrick on Zaya was like, yes, he, he yeah, was an I engine. That. Yeah, he, he was. was, he, was That's he, he was sick. He was sick. That's super fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question then becomes like, can they find a formula and can they fix some of the issues? Yeah. And I like, so who do you have more confidence in then? Who do you believe in more? Is it your boy Hilly or do you believe in Limit? It's... um. It's, it's, it's very tough because it's like the last nine games were just so damn ugly. But then there's yeah, like, like I'm with weeks. you, brother. I'm with you. <laughs> it's like, and then you hear the, the, the rumblings of Mad Lions actually like doing well in scrims. And then it's like, wow, they're doing the good in scrims for the first time in three years. Like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it's yep, like, yep, you yep. just look at that player list and uh, it seems to me as it's like, it's like in, in, in terms of, it, it's weird because I think it comes down to the format too. I feel like the format format is so unique in a way that you are always playing pressured field games. So how your performance fluctuates is so pronounced 
in terms yeah. of in, like in comparison to what it was in, in previous years, because yeah. in previous years, like you had many G2s and fanatics of old that you're just like running it down in like week one, two, three, four, and then they squeeze yeah, yeah, yeah. until the end. And then everyone forgets about that. Yeah. And now it's, uh, but, but the point I'm trying to make is that even back then in the previous years, teams had ups and downs all the time. They were just less impactful. <laughs> yes. And I see your point. Mad Lions for the majority of the year were really damn good. <laughs> so it's, it's so tough, <laughs> yeah. but just because of how bad the nine games were, it's like, I have to lean uh, towards Excel, but. It's a, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon that a lot of, I think fans don't get, but when you've been an analyst for a long time, in my opinion, you come to learn about what a ceiling is and like what the floor is. And that's why I really love the point that you made earlier about the ceiling and the floor, because there will be things, I, I'll never forget this. Yamano and I, we were on the show together for spring 2019 in Rotterdam, mm. Origin versus G2. And I'd finished the cast, so I'd already gone backstage. And then Yamato, once the show was over, then joined me. And he looked at me and he said, I think that that team can win. And then I was like, I fucking agree with you. And both of us saw that potential, right? There was something about what that team was doing that we were like, there's something about this team that makes them exceptionally good. There's something there, you know? And uh, sometimes you can't always put your finger on it, but it's kind of like when you've watched so many VODs and so many games, you just kind of like the, the team will do something or like they'll have an idea that you're like, whoa, that was a really good idea. The execution, okay, they didn't get it this time. But the fact that they had that idea at all means that they're thinking about it and that's something that they can work towards achieving, right? Yes, and for yes. a long time, we haven't really had that in Europe. And like, I would still be skeptical around whether or not I still have that same feeling about the current G2. But, I feel that um, about JDG right now. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, sure. That's, that's, a, that's a great feeling to have about JDG. That's a great example, right? Um, but uh, the, the point is, and the reason why I bring all this up is because when you look at MAD, while I'm not saying that they had that same spark that G2 did, it's easy when you have this kind of level of experience to be like, there's definitely a high ceiling there. You can see that they like a lot of the ideas that they have and a lot of the things that they're trying to do are very clearly high level for whatever reason, it's just not coming together. So if for whatever reason they can get to a point where they live up to that potential, then they will be really good. It's just about whether or not you believe that they can actually do it. And yes, one of the yes. advantages of this format is that because they largely were very consistent throughout the year, they now get given this opportunity and now they have a four week window where they can look. And obviously like from the fan perspective, fans don't trust Mad Lions internationally and I can't blame them. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a team that you just can't afford to sleep on, and it's a team that uh, I definitely would uh, would not doubt until we see what they have to offer. You okay. well, to, to to add to to the conversation uh, in regards to like G two and like how evident their ceiling was. I think it's always in regards to it's like BDS is a, is a good example of spring because I think they sacrificed a lot of efficiency in order to be precise. But they were playing right. in a league where there was a lot of imprecisions. So mm -hmm. in what the meta was, the most important thing was that you just make sure that you are there, you play the tank top, and then you make sure that your bot is secure, and then that you can win games like that. Now the game is a lot more dynamic, uh, so I worry about BDS, but that's uh, for, for a little bit later. Yeah, it's just It's like, how efficient can you be while being precise? That is like the definition of like what a ceiling is. It's like... yeah. Can you can you generate leads and 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 really really play your mid game in such a way where you don't sacrifice any minions? You make sure that every wave is pushed and you don't get caught doing so, and you don't get uh, you 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 don't team fight poorly. You don't recognize that oh the enemy took this space just because we decided to push another top wave and then we need to recover this as five. If you don't recognize those details and you lose in that dance, that's where uh, you know you you have try to gain efficiency through the sacrifice of, of precision. And I think that the best teams are the, 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 the teams with the highest potential are the ones with the best players that have found that equilibrium at a way higher level where, where their precision and efficiency meets. And it's like the perfect balance just at a way, way higher level. 
And I think it's like when it comes to BDS or maybe even Excel, it's like they have that precision. And when they were peaking, they had that precision. But their level of efficiency doesn't strike me as the one that is going to really, really elevate above some of the more teams with more established players. But then there's like Fnatic where they might have a very, very high ceiling when they are playing uh, very precise and that level of efficiency, but sometimes they are lacking that precision and then they look fucking awful, right? <laughs> and that, that, that awareness to yourself is so hard to sometimes realize as a player because you're used to playing a certain way. It's easy to lack that humility and you're trying to achieve that level of efficiency, but you just don't have the precision at all. And that's where like Mad Lions run it down, Fnatic run it down, because they're so used to something, but they need to start over. Yeah. It's interesting. I also wonder if how much you put creativity in there as well. I know you talk about efficiency and uh, precision, but do you also weigh in that element of creativity as part of that conversation too? In in my mind, I feel like most most creativity happens before the game starts, right? It's like sure the, the avenues that That's open fair. up playing different champions but in in most cases it's like within the game the decisions happen through through variables right it's like cooldowns no no cooldowns enemies showing information that you have or yeah. uh, it's, it's it's usually very it's like are we stronger okay we are matching are we weaker okay we want to mismatch and then you like play based on the information that you have but in sure. that analysis of the information available to you. You can be very creative or you can be very, very stiff, right? But I think that's where mm -hmm. efficiency comes in. It's like, if you're playing perfect, you're going to recognize the inefficiencies of the enemy and through that become creative because the enemy decided to, to, to run right. it down. <laughs> I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay, that's fair. No, that's that's fair. how I'd view it. Or so, do you see it some other way in terms of what creativity? I mean, is? I've never used the words like precision and... Um efficiency but i think it's definitely a a very valid way of looking at it mm. um because i think it all i think it's just different words for the same way that i see it which is just that when players are given a choice what is it that they do mm. and like sometimes i feel like i know it's a really stu I could, in hindsight i realize it's a really fucking stupid thing to say but it's 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 one of those situations where like something as simple as like um i remember I forget exactly who it was against, but do you remember Caps' Yasuo where he roamed top to one? It was versus I Showmaker. It was, Rise. it was versus Showmaker, and uh, it was uh, Nuguri on Irelia. Was it? It was that game. Yes, yes. And he just kept roaming top, you know. And it was one of those things where I, I the fact that he could like just see that mm. and then make that decision, I was just like this is very unique to this player. And this is not something that you get taught. This is something where he kind of looked at everything that was available to him. And then he made that decision. Yes, yes. But like, this is the same description as your efficiencies and precision. You know, like it's mm. you, you see the inefficiencies in your opponent. Showmaker isn't doing this in lane. Uh, Showmaker isn't actually contesting me on the wave or like the enemy jungler should be here thanks to the information that we've gained, which means that I have a window where I can do this, right? Yes, it's yes. ultimately all different names for the same thing um no no your example so, is, is perfect we are we are thinking exactly the same yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure Cause, but it, cause, it, cause it's exactly like you can make the big oh sorry i didn't want to interrupt you uh, please, no, please. It, the, the only finishing point i would have is that it's just a player's ability to see the map in its entirety and then make well-educated decisions based on that and then fully execute upon it shows you the real potential of the player yes i yes. feel no, and that, that's why i think we hold mad to high regard because el yoya i think we both believe is one of those players he yes, showcased yes. to us that he is someone that can perform at the the top level, and he's very good at looking at the map as a whole. And he's shown great examples of being able to make these these important decisions before. Um, sure. Just right now, he's not doing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hilly too. Hilly too. Uh, Hilly is another great example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's like your your example was 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 fantastic because most Yasu players they're gonna view what they want to do in that lane phase very. What's the word for it? Arbitrarily, like they're gonna see it very black and white, very linear. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm laning, I'm farming, I'm fine. And in terms of what the variables are available to you, you, you manage, you, you push, you manage this. It's like, 
It's the same when someone plays Aussie. It's like, oh, I'm playing Aussie. I'm farming. This is my job. This is my role. But then it's like you've we've I've seen games where like I remember Caps is like level four with Victor just goes top and just dives and just fucking lasers <laughs> the guy to get with jumper. Yeah. It's like yeah, he had yeah. push. It's like it's it, the information and everything pointed towards this being a good decision, which is like outside yeah. of the norm, you know. So it's yeah. it's like this is the equivalent of BDS in spring. They played they sacrificed those side minions just to make sure that they were there on the spot. That is the equivalent yeah. of taking every minion with Victor, and making sure you get the upgrades. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 it was a, it's, it's a great example for sure. OK, Exa, Exa versus Mad, I think we've covered it, I think. We're both in agreement that this is where, like, it's weird to call an upset, but this is where, like, we, we will find out so much about how the bracket will look like based over the form of these two teams. Yeah. Um, but it's like, Matt is a weird one because they could, like, there's a part of me, like, if they lose this one, I could still see them tearing up the, the lower bracket. It's like, <laughs> they yeah. need to, they need to really bomb out of this, the, this system for me to really lose faith in them completely. <laughs> yeah. 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 I agree. I really agree. Detroit it feels is, like yeah. coming into this, you feel like that the four strongest teams would be Fnatic, XL, Mad, G2. Yep, yep. Those would be Which, like my predictions for coming out based on yep. how the, the but obviously, also looks like. If Mad beats XL, that can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, because XL, I believe, are coming in as the fourth seat. So it's, yep, yep. Uh, it's, it's a tricky one of the format where you have things like this where because the seeding tool of our season finals is not perfect. It, uh, it means that you might have a chance of mismatch. But again, like because there's such a long break, we have two new patches since they've played. You may as well forget what the teams look like. And I always try to tell this to fans. I always try it and they never listen. You know, as like, you know, every world championship, you know, there's always like two or even three patches between when season ends and then when world starts. The teams that you saw are not going to be the same teams that end up at the World Championship. They're just not. Um, and uh, one of the best examples of that, actually, I remember was um, even the year where G2 still did pretty well. I think it was 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but remember when it was carry junglers and it was Dan One's year, where it was like Nidalee, Graves were the meta. Yeah, and that yeah. wasn't the meta going into Worlds, but it became the meta, you know? Um, it's, it's funny because it's like, I, I was in Korea during this time, right? Yeah. And in Korea, that shit was in full force. I, and then I, every time I watch LEC, it was like 3 a.m. I was like, what the fuck are these yeah. guys playing set? Right. Like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, for sure. It's it's like I had this conversation with Whip and we, we, we both basically agreed that it's like meta makes world champions. It's not world yeah. champions that make meta. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the, the, you, you definitely walk into a tournament with a group of players that are in most cases specialists at something and trying to restructure yep. that can be dangerous. So sometimes you lean into it. I think RNG 2018 is a, such a great example of it because it's like they dominated the whole year. MSI, yep. you know, they're coming into the tournament. Everyone thinks they're going to win. It's like I heard rumors. It's like uh, Fnatic was screaming RNG. I hear uh, the fucking... Fnatic is lane swapping against them just because they can't lane. Like they are lane swapping. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, like, what yeah. the fuck are they doing? <laughs> we, we, we have them in our group. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like we just slammed the Draven and tried to do our thing against them no matter what, and it kind of worked. But in the end, it's like Aatrox, Urgot, Irelia, Akali just happened to be way too broken. And yep. uh, mid jungle was just too important. And RNG kind of, uh, you know. We're in the wrong they meta. Collapse. They, they collapse yeah. for sure. I mean, that's how G2 made that run, right? Because like Wonder and Perks got to be the carries. And mm. then my boy Hyanan got to play as Heimerdinger bot, yes. permabanned by Uzi himself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, like, and then Invictus Gaming, you know, you had the rookie, the rookie and the shy. Yeah, yeah, the rookie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like they were considered two of the best laners in the world. And then they were given a meta where the two strongest lanes at the time were mid and top. Well, for sure. And, and Caps got humbled, unfortunately. Yep, yep. <laughs> and it's like, it's, 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 it's the same, right? As you mentioned, you mentioned Canyon. It's like, yeah, that's the jungle you want to have if Graves is a good <laughs> champ. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Yep. 100%. Yep. I still remember, like, I, I'll never forget, like, the fact that Flandre won Worlds, you know? He played, like, 30 games of Graves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, like, yeah, man, it's uh, Meta's define world champions. It's uh, and so like that's the thing that the, the Meta can determine a lot. G two obviously looks like a very strong team, and BDS I think were a consequence. Like we're moving on to G two BDS, but uh, the the summer format and the way that it changed. You already alluded to it, but it became way more dynamic, right? Yes, way. And BDS like didn't have a formula to be able to deal with how much more fluid the game state was. And also like Crowny was not having a good split. Uh, I was very disappointed in his performance. Now I, the, the question that like, I don't have the confidence to say right now is whether or not that was due to his individual performance, or whether or not that was to do with like, the situation that he was put in, whether it was bad drafts, or because like I haven't gone back and I don't remember all of the BDS games, um, but he was someone that like I kind of expected more from, especially when we think back to his spring performance. And we both agreed he was by far and away the best performing AD carry in spring. Right? Yes, yes. So to see the performance that he had in summer, like I was surprised that uh, he wasn't as strong as he was. No, I think it's 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 like. BDS was so formulaic in the way they played and now like the enemy can pull you in a direction in the draft that it forces you to adjust how you approach the early game based oh, off of jungle picks yeah. based off of top lane picks and sometimes even mid picks it's like you, you need to be able to play 3v3 mid you need to be able to contest 2v2 top side you need to be able to uh, contest 3v3 bot 2 if it's necessary and sure you can try to shoehorn yourself into those positions but then it's like you can put yourself in a position where, oh, all of a sudden your team doesn't can't play Jax, or your team can't play Aatrox, or your team doesn't want to play Renekton Sejuani, and all of a sudden you yeah. are going to be a lot worse. Or uh, yeah. some of the 2v2 uh, uh, jungle mids too. It's like there's the, the Annies and the Nikos together with the Viegos. Maybe you are the type of team that only wants to play Azir, but what happens when people realize that that's who you are? And then they begin to deny that. And then it's like yep. bottom side too. It's like sometimes the matchups are very, very stale. Sometimes uh, the matchups are insanely dynamic because the enemy chose to pick a range champ into your melee champ, uh, as an example. Like, uh, you can choose to match the Alistar blind that uh, T1 does, or you can choose to pick Lulu Aphelios, and all of a sudden it changes the whole game plan because your bot lanes can get dove. And I think Spring was like, oh, path into bot, 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 path into bot. Rift Herald spawns, right. okay, we're going to path into bot and kill any bot <laughs> while enemy does herald. It's like everything was just pat in the bot. And now it's right. like, you, you have to be clever and very sharp at analyzing where you can cause the deepest wound or if the contrary, the enemy can cause a deep wound for you to, to, to mend it ahead of time. So I think BDS, for me, BDS and SK should be by far the weakest teams uh, in, 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 in the tournament in my mind. And probably BDS, yeah. I would put them as, as, as is weaker, weaker than even SK. Wow. I mean, that's a beautiful depiction, honestly. Like, I think the way that you described it, uh, like, it, it kind of, like, beautifully brings together a lot of the thoughts that I've had of BDS mm -hmm. in that they do feel very stiff, you know? They feel like that they have their formula, and then if they can't make their formula or execute upon it, it uh, they just don't know how to win games. And like, I haven't had an opportunity yet to go back through all of their games from playoffs, or sorry, from the from the group stage. But obviously, they beat Heretics, and then they ended up losing to them 0-2. Yes, yes. And um, the adaptations that Heretics made, I think, uh, I mean, in that series, Crowny even played Samira, which is definitely not something that I associate Crowny with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the second um, Samira game was terrible. Like, it picked it into like yeah. Renekton or whatever. Oof. Yep. It was and, ugly. Uh, I think Ebi also had a good series, uh, along with the fact that Vito continues to find his footing. Ebi solo killed Adam on his Olaf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, the the thing that also like I I always know with BDS, right? I, the one sure fight they will have a method, in my opinion, where they can always lose, and that is if you hard camp top. Mm. I don't think this team has ever like drug a drug dragged adam <laughs> out of a hole that he gets put into yeah, like yeah. shale i think has proven that he can be a lot more consistent especially than i gave him credit for i think that he's a jungler that i think uh kind of slides under the radar a little bit because of the the environment and the team that he's on it's much easier for like the crownies and the adams to draw more of the attention 
Um, but I think that now that you kind of like reminded me, it's a team that is very bot centric. It is a team that has always like found ways to like give Nuke that comfort pick that he can have really strong success on. There was that time where it was, I think it was Syndra, Casio, and he had one more. It was Syndra Casio and it was something else that I can't remember. Was like it he Azir? played a lot of Azir, but then Azir it was was Azir. coming into... Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and, and Adam, like if you just camp him, like I remember Astralis doing it. I remember G2 doing it. Uh, I think Mad might have also done it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like there have been so many examples Astralis. where teams are just like, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah, they were the first one I mentioned, right? Oh, the sorry, Astralis sorry. with the Cled, and it was just the they just like dive, 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 dive. They just they just permanently attack. And I think that this is for me. This is why, like, the, and this is why I come back to what you said, where it like kind of beautifully encapsulates BDS for me. Because those examples are always in my mind where I'm like, oh, okay, BDS wins game one. How did they win? It's probably because they found advantages through bot. Why don't we just go top at level two and then level three and then at level five and then level six and then they don't have a top laner and there's not, they won't do anything to fix that problem. Like that wound that has just been created, they won't do anything to bandage it up, bandage it up. and they won't be fast enough to be able to build a lead through bot that they'll have another win condition to play through. And the yes, fact yes. that that hasn't changed in such a long time means that it's really difficult for me to ever truly believe in BDS. Yes, yes. No, no, I'm with you. I, I also, I, I didn't put, it's like when I did the coaching of the S award, the only thing that I measured it by, because I think it's a silly award, is like the, the, the progressive improvement and the consistency of the team. Right? Yeah. And it's like, how do you read patches and so forth? And I, and I, and I couldn't. Like I, I did a throwaway vote on third. I just put vitality. That's was my throwaway vote because I didn't think anyone really besides excellent G two. I didn't want to like give away points. I could have done it. Like I, just, I did a throwaway vote to put on vitality. I knew no one else was gonna vote vitality, so 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 it was my throwaway vote. But okay. BDS, they figured out something, but they stopped progressing altogether, and 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 they yeah. they they lost it all. But yeah. in the end, it's like. It's a coaching staff that is doing their first year in a format that is rather tricky. So it's like they they, they can still take the time to 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 figure some some of the things out. But it was That's a, super fair, yeah. But it's like yeah, it's like looking at their matchup against G two. It's like the last time they played. It's like uh, it's 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 like are we going? Are we? If I think of BDS and the roads of winning, it's like are they gonna break G 2s bot lane hard enough? <laughs> like <laughs> for for G two to not like. Com like like if I think Caps versus Nuk or Nuke, uh, like yeah. I I can't even begin to imagine a matchup where Caps is not gonna end up ahead unless yep. like the enemy stumbles into it right like Caps dashes on their tier two with Lucian right uh, yep. and BB into Adam it's like Adam his champions ha have gotten a lot worse it's like Olaf has gotten weaker Darius has gotten yep. weaker and now it's like a Renekton Aatrox, Adam is good at them, but it's like, in terms of the edge he had, everyone has come around it. And BB even went so far to prepare a setting into his Olaf and like solo kill them and push him out of the game almost instantly. It's like they made yeah. this whole plan where they just burnt Adam's flash level one, and then he I played Olaf that, with yeah. no flash and then the game was over, you know? It's like, it was yeah. just done. So it's like, the edge that Adam has is no longer there and you're left with all of the weaknesses that he brought and a lot of that was covered for the exact reason that you mentioned. It's like they played into bot, and then if the enemy jungle went topside to gank, you just couldn't measure up to the advantage of like Zeri Lulu being head. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's it's tough. I I, I empathize with with BDS, but I feel like uh, they 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 reached their ceiling and their peak, and uh, uh, it's it's borderline that it's worse for them that they are in the upper bracket, because I think. They are now going to show the world how they get slaughtered and they show their hand and then they need to play again. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it, but I feel like this could be true for almost anyone facing up against G2 in, in, in the first round. For sure. I mean, G2 just, they're just so much, there is a clear gap between them and everyone else in the league. And uh, I don't think that that's even under debate. They literally only lost three games this split. Two of them were to XL, one of them was to Mad. Yep. Uh, um, they uh, they had a very knit, it, what should have been a perfect regular season. Um, and if it wasn't for the fact that uh, XL was able to push them to the full five. And then if anything, 
all Excel did was make G2 better because Excel was actually, and I mean, credit to them, they were kind of able to showcase some of the, the weaknesses that G2 do demonstrate. Um, but uh, I continue to be amazed by Hans Sommer. Uh, I think Mickey is... I'm happy to see Mickey doing well, you know, yeah, like yeah. he's, uh, it's, it's hard not to be a Mickey fan. He's such a sweet guy. MVP. Um, yeah, you, you had the, you had the pleasure of working with him back yes, on Splice yes. in 2019, uh, 2016, 2017, 2016, yeah, rookie, 2016, 2017. Rookie split. <laughs> yeah, he was the bad guy. He yeah. came in as the bad guy. Yeah. I found him in dynamic. You can you imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he, he was the first non-Dane on your full Dane squad, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, uh, and he's just, he's a, and obviously when he went to XL, him and Patrick were considered the best bot lane in the league. Um, yeah, the <laughs> best, yeah. uh, and then he comes back to G2 and all of a sudden him and Hansom are considered the best bot lane in the league. And you start to notice trends and you give him an environment where he can thrive. And also it's just his meta, you know, we talk about how, Limit's been able to thrive in this kind of environment. This is exactly the type of meta that Mickey loves. Um, so, and like, uh, the bot lane is incredible. Uh, and I, I think Razork had a stronger regular season than Yike did. But I think that Yike throughout the entire year has been the most consistent jungler. Yep. I would even rate him above Yankos in terms of consistency throughout the whole year. And that might be a little unfair to Yankos because Yike has won more. <laughs> uh, but uh, Yike, was, uh, Yike was super consistent throughout the year. So credit to Yike. I think he's, he's, he grew unbelievably fast. Um, and he's a, he's a very good jungler. It's, it's weird to me because I think Summer was probably... Uh... It's, it's like, uh, Yike had a lot of stinkers in summer. I think that the first BO5 against XO, he played quite bad, like where he like overreached oh, really? so many invades. And okay. I, I think that the finals, he was insane. Like the, the finals was yeah. what I expected him of. It's like, then I see like his Ivan games. It's like by far the best Ivan in the region. It's yep. just mechanically, yeah, yeah, yeah. mechanically super, super talented and uh, just an insane player altogether. I think he had a phenomenal year. I, I put, like, that was the only person that I took out of uh, the old pro, uh, in, 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 like, the old pro. I, I just That's put Razork uh, ahead of Yike because I felt like Razork totally was so, so important in, like, the wins that, uh, that, that Fnatic actually pieced together because I think it was, totally like, fair. there were so many, like, games where he completely ran the game, like, 100 CS ahead with Viego and, like, really, yep. really dominated and, yep. and really, really pushed the envelope. And I think that there were games where Razorg did, like there was the last game of the regular season, I believe against SK, where he like died level three. And then the game was super, super hard. If you yeah. do that shit on G2 and Yag died level three, because there was a lot of games where he did that, it was like, they just kind of brush it off, you know? Because they are That's starting cool. off at such a high point with just the level of uh, how strong their bot lane is. And also like Caps being in really, really good form, I think. And BB uh, having like, probably the best split in Europe out of the, the three splits that he played this year. Uh, I think BB was like by far and beyond the best top laner in, in, in Europe. His laning at times was a little bit sketchy. Yeah, yeah I don't remember like a Jax game or two, like what yeah, it kind yeah, of looked yeah. odd. But no, I was aligned with you. I, like my, my all pro was this. I felt a little bad, but uh, I, was, I had the exact same debate with you. And now that you mention it, like if we'd had that conversation together, I probably too would have moved Razork to top. Because, like, I think you make a fair point, which is that the mistakes that Yike makes are less impactful because of the people around him, mm. you know? Which means that his, his mistakes are less punished compared to someone like Razorks. Because G2 is more likely to compensate for whatever mistake he has. Or at the very least, like, someone like a Mickey is the person that will end up getting punished for it. Uh, as opposed to Razork himself. You know, like, they'll find ways to somehow, like, share the burden across the team yes, rather yes. than have all that responsibility for on a single player. And a hundred percent agree with you that Razor became the lifeblood of Fnatic, uh, this split. And he was, he was massively, massively strong. So totally fair, totally valid. Very much agree. I also want to add this, like when, when people saw this, I don't think this voting is close to the same conversation as we have like in the LCK. Cause like KT, all five KT players being first, I was was very strange to me because I think that uh, Chovy and and Peanut sh should be there, right? 
So right. for, for, yeah. for, for me, it's like G2 being all pro, I don't think it's the same thing as, as K2 having five players in all pro. For sure. Because, no, because, fair, because yeah. G2 was far and beyond the best team. Like it, it wasn't even, it's not even a conversation. So I think this, this, yeah. this being an outcome, I don't mind it at all. In terms of the, the, one, the two and three? The second, yeah, the two and three were the this debatable me, ones yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was I like, I, I, I already have... mentioned. Hey, no, go ahead, irrelevant, go ahead. Was, irrelevant was my second. Okay. I had, I had number one, I had Broken Blade. Number two, I had Irrelevant. And number three, I had Oscar Rinnan. Okay. Um, Odo Amne, to me, did not have a good regular season. And like, okay. maybe I'm unfair, but like the start of his split wasn't the best. Uh... I don't think that he had a great performance against Broken Blade, which to be fair, if like you're rating him as the strongest top lane, that's fine. And while it did get better, like, you know, um, the, I, I'm open to that debate. But like when I think about overall performances throughout the collective entire season, Oscar Innan, I just think like really came out of his shell and mm. he had like a really strong season. And then I was like, oh, well, do I put Oscar Innan in second? And then I was like, well, irrelevant was like, he never lost a lane. He was like, the reason why SK was ever like remotely committed, like they almost won against G2 just off the back of him, you know, like irrelevant was just such a monster to me, this split that he deserved to be somewhere in the top three. So okay, that's why I did end up putting him in second. I think that I would have been open to the debate of putting him third, but uh, for me, he was, he, he deserved to be in the top three for, for top laners this split. Oh, fair. Yeah. I, I think that the relevant second series against Fnatic was was quite underwhelming. I think Oscarini played a lot fair. better there. Uh, the first series was a monster series, like the Gwen game he had. Um, yeah. Like well, he he completely like really played out of mind in in that series. I, I think relevant was 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 definitely decent. I think that like Oduamne, I think I remember in the most of the regular split games, like he was just on on, on tank duty, like like many top yeah. laners. Yeah. Um, I think Odo Amne, his worst games were against BB, where he just got completely like annihilated in some of those games, but also like sometimes started from 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 bad spots where like he got dove as Nar and like got pushed off or like Renekton starts with, with first blood because something happened. Yeah. yeah. And then like he comes to lane with a with with a long sword and the enemy Renekton has a pickaxe. Like there was definitely some of that. But I, I, I put yeah. Odo a second and, and Oscar in third, and I felt like just, just Fulton and Chasey performing so much worse than expected definitely made top lane a lot more uninteresting. Yeah. I think um, Oscarin, I put him third. I think he had some really strong games, like his Kisante games, the fact that he was playing Rumble, uh, I think was 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 massive. And uh, the, the series against Mad Lions was super, super good from Oscar. Uh, I think uh, some, of the, some of his lower end games, though, were, were some of the games that stood out to me, but a uh, fantastic uh, glow up from Oscarin for sure. Yep. For me, I put I put I put Patrick and Limit as my second uh, bot lane. I, I don't think Noah and Trimby were effective enough in in, in, yeah, in the I BOs. Agree. I think Noah I think being Noah... top three, I think he he did have a great regular season. Uh, but as you said, the moment the meta kind of shifted in bot lane, he was definitely one of the eighty carries I think got hurt the most. So I'm I'm aligned with you. I think I think a lot of the eighties. It's like the reason I couldn't put Flacket here because I think a lot of he got away with getting Zaya every game somehow. And that is like, <laughs> like I, I looked at the matches, so I was like, bro, this guy is keep, keeps getting Zaya. And Noah was, was the same thing in, 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 in the bo 3s Like when he got Zaya, he was fucking popping off, you know? He was, he sure, was, sure, sure, sure. He was, he was really popping off. Like that was like the champion that people held on to, you know, between the, between the switch ups. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely, you know, uh, it's interesting. Mechanically, I just I just felt like that I, I saw consistency from Flackard from start to end. That was just one of the big things for me. I never felt like you made a comment earlier where you felt like the Noro and Trimby became a little bit more silent, you know? Mm. Like uh, we didn't feel that same presence that we did in the regular season. But for me, I, I never felt that for Flackard, which is like maybe I overvalued him by putting him, I believe I put him second. Um, but like it, it was just super impressive to me that level of consistency that he demonstrated. I felt like that his presence was always felt um and so i just i rated his individual performance very highly um but like the whenever i was thinking about all pro the four teams that i was thinking a lot about was fanatic xl heretics and um g2 and g2 and so like my conversation was always between those four who do i think was the best performer among those and then who would i rate for 
And so that's when I sat there and thought to myself, I like I feel like Flackhead had was stronger than Patrick, and then Patrick was stronger than uh, Noah. Um, the fact that VTO is not on this list is what really upset me. I think VTO had an an amazing split. It's like he played super, super, super well. Um, and I can't remember if I rated him second or third. Yeah, we put them both uh, third, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised uh, that uh, people viewed Abadage so highly, honestly. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I was honestly surprised to see Abadage there. Um, but VTO for me, like humanoid VTO caps, those were the three best mids of the whole season. Uh, and I was, I was open to the debate of like rearranging that order. Because um, mm. like after regular season, I thought humanoid was number one. And then after group stages, I was kind of like, oh, is, is like, is VTO actually the best performing mid right now? Like, I was happy to have that conversation around what order you want to put them in. But uh, the the fact that he didn't make top three was very, very surprising to me. Same. Like, uh, I think, I think Abadaga, I think he played well as the game continued. I think like after 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I think when he got to stabilize, I think he team fought well. Uh, I think these are these are things that are important. But I think... His lane phase was so terrible, and I think that there was a lot of... When he had leads out of lane phase, I think that he just stumbled into them based off of like heavy mistakes of the opposition. And I know yeah. people are going to reference, oh, he sold the killed Caps, but Caps still ran that game. Like, it, it, it didn't matter <laughs> yeah. at all, you know? And it's like, sure, he, he, he gets his solo kill on Caps, but it's like that, that looked like it was some of the laziest shit I've ever seen from Caps, you know? Yeah. And that's, that sometimes <laughs> happens. Because it's like even that game where he played Lucian into Jace, um, I just need to show you this. I just need to show you this because <laughs> I, 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 it's such a pet peeve of mine. Let me, let me see. So basically that was game two, XL versus G2, Lucian. That's, 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 I need to show you this shit. Okay, I'll just check the highlights. Maybe it showcases it. So basically, oh yeah, this is, this is the perfect time. <laughs> oh, this, I remember that, yeah. So it's just like, the, the dive is grief and all. It's like, that is, everyone remembers that shit. But it's like, yeah. I, I, I look back at this moment so it's so strange because they, they are showing us bot. It's like, this happened as well, which was, was terrible grief. But, but Abedagi just TP'd back. He walks into yeah. lane and it's like, while you're watching this lane phase, right? You just get to see how he loses all of his HP and there's no trade back to caps. And he just TP'd back. And I'm like, what on earth just happened mid? I don't know if he hammer from Q into the wave and he just lost all of his HP, but he lost all of his HP just TPing back after they killed caps and he also TPed back, right? Yeah. And then somehow when they and this also was so fucking weird. It's like Peach was on a world. Uh, whenever that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like they, they like if looking at this position, Abadaga's game is so over. It's so done. It's GG. <laughs> yeah. Caps just doesn't yeah. he just can't run it down like the way he did. Yeah. It's like he can, he, can, he can W auto Q dash here to diagro this turret and then like just kill the guy. It's easy peasy, yeah. but Caps does a wild one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I get it. I, I'm aligned with you. Yeah, yeah I don't think I would like had a very that strong... to, to to the world. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's super valid. I think that Abadage's laning has not been the strongest. And like, you know, you can make the argument, yeah, but no one's claiming that he's better than Caps. And it's one of those things where like, yeah, but <laughs> like that is an illustration of like the gap that really exists between what the top has to offer and you're putting Abadage within that group. And again, I don't want to take away from the fact that Abadage did have some great games. He did have some excellent Jace performances where he was able to carry by himself. And then there were also a couple of Azir games that were also really, really good. Um, but yeah, for me, it was really hard to put him in the top three. Yep, yep. So. Uh, he, he definitely had uh, great games, but just look at the looking at the body of work, I, I, I put Viteo and, and, and Humanoid uh, above that in my mind. Yep. Tra trying to I find agree. that, uh, I remember this Leblanc game, right? This Leblanc game, it tells it doesn't tell you the story of uh, what happened in this Leblanc game. Because <laughs> it's like here, he ends with a fantastic scoreline, but I remember this game, um, uh, let me see if I can pull it up. XL versus SK game three. Let's see if this is the, the game that I'm thinking about. That's week four, so that's a best of three for sure. Is this so the one like, where the dive happens? Look at these conditions in this game, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> they are disastrous. 
<laughs> and he ended with the scoreline from before. Like he managed to recover, but these being your conditions throughout the through the early game is is insanity. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is which is what our conversation from before, like Excel, that an anomaly because statistically they are so insignificant in the first fifteen minutes of the game. Uh, yep. But then they managed to like convert positions like this, which is they deserve prof score. But this is what I value in a mid laner. You know, it's yep. like you you losing a limb in in the early game, <laughs> and uh, being such a spot is very tough. But like God bless you, you managed to do this armless. You know, that's that's like props to you. You know, <laughs> but that's like more of a team thing, less uh, more so less so than just individual. Yeah, you know? that's fair. That's fair, man. Fnatic. Yeah, I mean, I'm a. Yeah. Uh, I have opinions on Fnatic. They might be a little outdated because I'll be honest with you, Yamato. I haven't. I only do preps on the teams that I'm casting leading up to the week, and so Fnatic and SK are, they're next week. So I haven't yeah. gone back and watched <laughs> any of their parts. I'm just focused on the G2 BDS Fnatic cell. My opinion on Fnatic, you've already summarized it, was very much that I think that they are a team that needs to play through ahead. Uh, play through a head, play through a lead. Um, and I think that the way that they get that is largely through Razork. Razork has been playing a lot better, and I feel like that he just seems happy. This is really cringe, I know, but Razork seems to me like a player that thrives depending on his environment. And when he feels like that his environment and the people that are play with him are like in the same headspace that he is in, then he feels like he can play how he wants. And the reason why I say this is because in certain interviews that he said, he's just commented on how I just can do what I want. And anyone that's ever played any form of competition knows what it's like to make a decision. It doesn't work out. And then you feel like that your teammates are judging you. You Mm -hmm. then kind of start making different decisions because you don't want to be the guy that like your teammates don't like because you keep making these things that then they don't work out every now and then. Yes, but yes. in this environment, it feels like that he can do what he wants and his team just supports him. You know, mm. if he makes a mistake, it doesn't matter. Like they they keep playing on and they and and I feel like that that has just made Razork's play overall much healthier and happier. And he has a lot more conviction and confidence in his plays because it feels like that he doesn't mentally he's not being as affected as the for the mistakes as he would be in the past and obviously this is all speculation mm. i will add that i have no like solid evidence to suggest like that his previous team environment was really bad and now he's in a really great one but what i can say for sure is i rated him as the best performing jungler after the regular season uh i think that it is super fair to say that he was the best performing jungler of the whole split and i think that he is the reason why Fnatic have been as strong especially in the early game um because of his individual play so Massive props to him. Mm. No, uh, I, I think that's uh, spot on. Like on my end, it's like knowing Razork, I know that I think what has helped him more than anything is that he has gotten so much more mature uh, throughout throughout this year. I think working in very different teams and, and recognizing, you know, what he has gotten from past teammates and what he can't necessarily rely on and what he needs to build himself, I think he has is a lot more in tune with that, you know? Because there are certain yeah. elements, like when you play in a team, your first team, you stay there for two years, there's certain things you get used to. And then you switch a yeah. team, and then all of a sudden those things that maybe you took for granted are no longer there, you need to readjust yourself. And that can come uh, at, at a great shock. I think throughout this year, I think he has matured super, super much. And additionally, I think a big plus is just that for for, for in summer, they actually had a bot lane that could play. Like yep. the, the previous splits, the bot lane was so inconsistently bad yep. Uh, yep. that that was it was it was very tough. Uh, to, I can imagine it was very tough to jungle in that environment. <laughs> That's very right. sure. But my main concern for Fnatic is that I think this is a team that can come into a weekend with a very very wrong read. They've done that. I think That's that fair. I, I think That's that they have players point. that are very very stubborn in regards to what they should be playing. And I think that can really, really mess them up. I think Oscar Inin has had some stinker games, like very, very game losing games still, even though he's he's the rookie and he has had great performances still, he's had some stinkers, you know, and that can carry very, like there's a lot of weight now, qualification to the World Championship, after a break, getting used to that, a lot of pressure. And I think bot lane, they are very, very good, but if they are not ahead, they are not the same. Like they, they are not, good at playing a game that forces like forces them to maneuver their support to break through mid and then to support in the bot i think they like to play their games heavy-handed through bottom side 
I think when Trimby doesn't have the lane to enable him and allow him to impact the map, I see him struggling in how he converts. Because then again, it's like the meta shift, it's like he's the guy who is very, very good on the range supports and really likes to be in lane and really, really create that 2v2, 3v3 scenario on bottom side, right? This is how they won with yeah. Malrang, this is how they do the best. And now it's like, oh, midi supports? I've seen some Troboner cues on Nautilus that uh, <laughs> even even Hilly and Mickey will do, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just... yeah, 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 I remember them, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's like... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's it's like I, 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 after we talk about SK, I had this idea that we should do. It's like most likely to disappoint, most likely to like <laughs> do disappoint, and then most likely to win. Just give like some instead of a tier list because I'm thinking it's like yeah, it's a tier list. It kind of doesn't make sense, you know. Yeah, it's just gonna be pretty generic. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah no. but it's yeah, man. Like that's fair. I mean, it's it's funny because for me. Fnatic is still the team that I have like the most confidence in because I see their ceiling. Mm. You know what I mean? You make a lot of really valid points that I don't disagree with. It's more that like, I just don't think that they are as punished as you would expect. You're the more fact like glass that they, half full rather than me. Yeah, I'm more of a empty. glass half. Yeah, exactly. I'm more of a like everything that you've said, I 100%. Uh, see see where you're coming from. It's more that like they after going into the losers bracket of the best of threes, they two o two o'd, and then against Heretics, they three one. You know, mm. the only team that they actually like flat out couldn't take down was XL, and that's the series that I haven't rewatched yet, so I'm not going to comment on it because I don't fully remember it. Um, but their series versus uh, Heretics, it felt like that they came in with a very clear game plan, and after realizing the mistakes of the first best of three, they very quickly adapted. But like that comment right there was one of the biggest glaring issues for me. Was like, oh right, this will be two patches later, and they might just get a complete wrong meta read. The only advantage they have is they play on week two. Yes, yes. <laughs> so they can watch all of the week one's meta, and they be like, oh guys, we've been scrimming the wrong things, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they can. They can adjust and then come into the second week with a good plan after seeing whoever it is play that that best of five. So they do have that element, which gives me a little bit more confidence in them. But like Fnatic was one of my front runners to 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 qualify for the World Championship, just because I feel like that they've demonstrated to me such they've demonstrated a high ceiling to me. Um, and my concerns coming into the split, where I was like, I still don't have faith in Oscar Rinnan. Uh, I don't know what Noah's going to look like. Can Razork find any level of consistency? I do feel like a lot of those questions have been answered for me. Um, so I still kind of like, who are their opponents? They would either play against, if if XL won, then they would play against BDS if G2 won. Uh, but if XL lost, then they would play against XL. So yes, it's either yes. XL or BDS. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. I think for I guess more I... chances against both, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then SK, I don't remember them at all, is the truth. <laughs> what I do remember was that Surtis played Akali in game two of their series versus Heretics, and I thought that it was super int, and then they won that game. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and I remember Irrelevant also, like, he, I think that if they continue to play through him or like if they give him more... Re I mean, I guess the impressive thing about him is the way that he can build leads independently without a huge amount of resources. Um, but I don't have... I need to watch more on SK and figure out my, my full opinions on them. All I know is that like initially my gut tells me to not have a lot of faith in them, especially if they played someone like a Mad Lions, even though Mad Lions have been some slumping. I still just kind of have more faith in Mad and their ability to bounce back than I do in SK's current ceiling. So, it, yeah, it's it's weird to me because SK. I feel like I'm I, the SK is the roster that I hope that they stay together next year. Oh yeah, I I I hope because I feel like this is the type of team that need more time. I think they just need more time because I think they they played some games that are really really high level. Yeah, but, but I feel like their issue their issue it seems like they their games if they don't follow a very very straight line and it like it it like angles itself just a little bit then their players begin to they they, they just begin to play very stupid the hands just stop working it's, it's, and it's, 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 it's like <laughs> they are ahead they need to pressure the enemy off mid wave and then they need yeah. to go into nash 
but then for some reason they think that they can fight, but in reality you can't, and then they just chase them to the next dimension, and then they get yeah. aced, and then all of a sudden like the game becomes so chaotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that you talk about it, it's like coming back to me. Yep, I know and, exactly what you're talking and, about. And, and that to me is it, that that has happened throughout the entire year. And it's like when yeah. Marcoon is flowing, dude. He level three ganks top, gets a kill, presses mm -hmm. B, secures bottom side. They win three v three. All of a sudden, Marcoon out of the gate five five minutes into the game he's two zero one every lane is winning holy fuck what is this team and then they get advantages they snowball that they transfer that well they play well together i remember like one game they played like maokai kaiser versus versus fanatic they controlled nash they bait them in they ate saplings took zero risk played super super clean I was like, who is this team and then the <laughs> next game they i don't know like, like the next game was was uh the the humanoid Azid. they won that too but with with the gwen right but they, they showcased very high League of Legends, but it's so damn inconsistent that I'm not ready to like um, bet on Put it, you know? Yeah, 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 I get that. I get that. And you just then have to question like, yeah, what can they show with the with the practice and what have they been able to do with their, the break that they've had? Because I know that they've been nonstop scrimming, but I haven't actually reached out to any coaches. Sometimes I like to, but I kind of want to come in blind. Okay. <laughs> I want to come in with my preconceived expectations rather than like, because, you know, for those watching on, on the tube, uh, coaches are more than happy to tell you like, oh, we're going really well in scrims or like, you know, oh, we're kind of struggling in scrims. So you can get a pretty good feel for like how the teams are feeling coming into uh, mm. into an event. My favorite one was when G2 told me that they were a 2 and 25 against Down 1 going into Worlds mm. uh, back in 2019. Yes, yes. I was like, oh, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, um, I have no, no idea how SK are currently looking. And I'm excited to see what they, uh, what they can do. But as you rightly said, BDS and SK are the teams that I don't have faith in. And um, right now, I think... Uh, it's like G2's tournament to lose, kind of, you know? That is a... That is an, and that B for Mad Lions is your expectations, not like... Because obviously, if you were to just use their current performance, Mad would probably be at the bottom, right? The wild card. I like that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> All right. And then it's like the final thing that we could do is... We just do one of these. Not painful. Come shit. I don't know what the site this is. Oh, no. Someone... Oh, thank God. It's not some crazy person took that domain. <laughs> and then it's like we could do most likely to disappoint. Okay. So disappoint so the, being like this... not making the world championship when we believe that they should. Okay. Excel. Excel. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Uh, so I'm going to put a V for you, and then I'm going to put a Y for myself. Although sure. It looks so similar. Actually. <laughs> XL. I feel yeah. like like Fnatic is such a weird one, because I feel like Fnatic, yeah. it's like I believe in Fnatic. I think their ceiling can be super, yeah. super good. I think sure. they can be as good as being in top two. Like, I think uh, there's a world where they play the finals against G2, you know? Yeah, they that's the world run. That's the world I see. Yeah, that's the world I see, yeah. I think there's also a world where, like, they don't figure out the draft, and then they, like, out of the first game... <laughs> They're like, fuck me, dude. It's yeah. like, and then they just like completely plummet. Cause it's like them being a loser bracket. Um, I hope, I hope that uh, them seeing those first initial games is a big, big blessing. Cause it's like, I, I, I just see Fnatic as a very, very emotional team. You know, it's like Trimby, Humanoid, sure. Razork, you know, these, these yep. they have very, very high ceilings, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, um, it hangs in the back. What humanoid you know? will we see? You know what I mean? Because World Championship qualification humanoid, he's a scary yeah, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. I still remember that Silas uh, in uh, in Malmo. That was uh, whew, that was a scary humanoid. So we'll see. Most likely to impress, meaning like uh, exceed our expectations. Exceed, exceed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most likely to impress. Who can exceed our expectations? It's probably mad, right? It has to be mad, right? It's like Yeah, it's probably mad. The, They're the team that's most likely. Because it's like, if I imagine after this weekend that Mad play versus G2 in the winner bracket finals, it's like, I'm not too... I'm going to be like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, so, it's like... <laughs> look, Elioia and Hilly are good players. Wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, 100%.
just to to make it three it, all good things come in three most likely yeah, to win <laughs> uh we'll both go in sk right of course <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, in my opinion, G2's tournament to lose. Yes, yes. Okay, let, let's have a fun one. That let's. Which player do you think will like pass their limits? Of all the players that we have, who do you think the one is the most likely to showcase like their peak potential? You know, level ninety nine. Which player do you think? It's like really there. like crazy pop off, like holy yeah. shit! It's gonna. Ascend. Let's just say, who do you think will be the best player of the season finals? So let's put it like that. Most likely MVP. Sure, let's go with most likely MVP. How we do? Most likely surprise MVP. Because otherwise, like well, caps Mickey, you know this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, is it? Do you want an answer that isn't G two? Yes, is the question. Right. So we okay. add the surprise. <laughs> okay, we add the surprise. Um, not G2. you know, it's Harry. If if <laughs> not G two, okay, not G two. Yeah. Um, oh, who do I think? I got my guy. You got your guy. Uh, let me think. I think I got my guy. My guy is Razork. Who's Mine's your guy? Mine's Odo Omni. Odo Omni. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Give me your reasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think in these environments, like this is where the Odo like experience, I know it's kind of cringy, but like the, the whole, I genuinely believe that in these environments is where like his experience really comes into its mm -hmm. own. You know, like the fact that he can like rally the troops, the fact okay. that. I believe he's really going to, in, in that environment with the pressures on, a spot of worlds, like he's going to be head down, super focused. He's going to want to do absolutely everything to win. Uh, and I just think that if, if anyone is going to carry XL to a worlds in another like finals appearance, uh, he's going to be a big factor of that. I see that. That's my take. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, uh, for my choice, it's more like uh, meta dependent. Because it's like okay. I see what, what I see what the junglers are playing, and I see Razor yeah. like spamming Talia, playing Carthus, you know, yeah. like like the Razork, the peak Razork is playing those mechanical champions, you know, Carthus, Talia. I hope he even uh -huh. goes so far to play Fiddle Six because Yak is playing it in solo queue. Like oh, the Fiddle Six okay. is not mechanical, but it, 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 like yeah, you, need yeah, to, yeah. you need to have the mojo, you know. And I, think, I get it, yeah. And I think if. If things play out in the same way that all of the soul queue accounts are highlighting, then I think that Razor could really, really thrive in 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 such a uh, such a situation. Which is funny because I, I like most likely at this point is Fnatic, but I also put Razor here because it, I, dude, I, I did. I just looked at my Excel. I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's That's like funny, man. for for me still though. It's like even though. Fnatic could have a very easy role where they just f beat BDS. And yeah. if, if Fnatic lose in the next series and become the fourth seed, I would consider that a disappointment still for myself. You That's know? fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, I, I think, I think we could, we, you, you, you could, you set the same expectation for XL. It's like, I, I imagine yeah. Fnatic reaching top three, XL top three minimum, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, okay, okay. So we just outline that so they like don't they win a best of five and they qualify and they beat golden guardians like oh look they didn't disappoint anyone it's like no nah, man this is this is like some sloppy joe passing you know it's like <laughs> it's have like, you seen that by the, bro the number of fans that i've seen on reddit that were like gg clear favorites going into this i'm like bro we don't even know who they're playing against yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like let's chill like you know what i'm not gonna trash talk you because like i don't think europe is playing especially well and like yes our fourth seeds have not done super well in the past like you guys can sit on that high horse i'm more than happy to let you sit on that high horse absolutely no problem whatsoever all I'm going to say is that like, it's a dangerous horse to sit on, you know, like it's <laughs> like EU versus NA, like it's a dangerous, like I've been there. I remember saying Matt is going to three OEG. This shouldn't be a problem. Easy peasy. And I just like, I, and then we got three O, you know, like it's a dangerous horse to sit on, you know? So just bear that in mind. You, you, uh, 
you got to be cautious about it being be that confident in your team. Matt. It would be too funny if it, it, it's going to be mad, bro. You know, it's, <laughs> it's it's very likely to be mad. It's gonna. <laughs> It's, it's, it's too funny because it's like, it's incredible to me that Mad has lost play-ins twice. They lost twice. against Armut, yep. bro. Yes, they Royal did. Yes, or they did. Yes, they lost to uh, Armut, yeah. <laughs> that them. wasn't even like, that wasn't even the qualification match. It was the match to get to the qualification. Yes. You were well, then beat them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, uh, that was mental, bro. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, and then we got, th then they got 3-0'd by EG. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like fair play yeah. to GG. They are not a bad team. Like they, they had a no. stinker of a playoffs. And I think yep. if you don't face C9, I think GG is the worst team to play uh, against in the BO5 out of TL uh, energy. TL is peaking right now. They're doing super well. Pioshik Summit are really, really fucking performing. But yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of like the level that GG has shown in their peaks is super, super good because like Gori is just heavily underperforming, like playing gig. I did hear. I didn't get to see the series, but it seemed the impression was Gory had a terrible series it, it's like, against TL. It, it, words can't uh, explain how bad it was. Like he's Tristana, yeah. Tristana W jumping into the enemy team and like losing right. the whole game. Like he's like the he's like the sixth enemy or something. You know, like he's yeah. yeah. And the fact that they went to five games with that in mind, you know, like that's got to mean something, right? The fact that even with his poor performance, they still brought game five. Yeah, this is this but, is a very experienced experienced team with with uh, with a lot of like good energy going on about them. They have a lot of good things going on for them. This is a well put together team, and like the big question mark for them for the, the entire year was just Licorice, and Licorice is playing well. Like Licorice is doing yeah. a lot better. So I mean, he had a good MSI as well. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. And it's like I, I guess the main question is that people talked about like last year's Worlds, we had no time to prepare. And additionally, we had COVID and we had, like, we were completely fucked by the schedule. But now, because the <laughs> Asian game is there, it's like, yeah. if, if a team, it's like, you are out next week, right? Or am I crazy? Yeah. You're out next week already. What do you mean? It's, it's like, next week, there's three show days? Next week? No, so it's two, 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 two. So it's four weeks. It's so four this weeks. Week is, yeah, it's four weeks. Oh, shit. I thought it's three weeks. No, it's a four week tournament. Oh damn! Yeah, so it's two, 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 and then we go to Montpellier oh. for the finals weekend. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right, that's so wild. Okay, we'll, it's it's two best of fives per weekend. Yeah. Okay. okay. I and then they, I they... believe. Okay. I believe we end. Wait, I was. I need to look at. I need to minimize Discord for a second. So yeah. So right now, so game week one is eighteenth, and then there's the twenty fifth is week two, and then the first is week three, and then oh, Montpellier God. is eight ninth, and then I believe World starts. What was it announced? The the tenth. So we finish oh, the, the okay, okay. Makes ninth, sense. It makes tenth, sense. I and counted then you have five wrong. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the the team. So even if you're, let's say G two wins the whole thing, right? G two wins the split Sunday, the tenth of September. You then have well, play-ins starts. I believe on eighth the October? eighth something. Like it's something like well, it was on Reddit today. Literally, didn't they officially announce it? Where was it? Where, where's that thread? I saw uh, it. 10th. Uh, it's 10th because yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Series is 9th. So there you go. So let's say your Can you go back to that screen for a second? The, the Emmy. Yeah. yeah okay. September. So let's say, let's say you're Fnatic, right? You, you win. And let's just say for simplicity's sake, SK win, right? Mm -hmm. So Fnatic and SK win and then Fnatic lose here, right? So round two. So your season, if you're Fnatic, ends on the 25th of August. You then have the first of september the 8th of september the 15th of september the 22nd of september the 29th of september and then the six, you have six weeks until you play yeah yeah that's, so that's that's uh, solid as fuck yeah <laughs> so uh i mean like it's true that go i think that their finals is this weekend so they will have eight weeks i think you counted one, one week wrong though because the fanatic sk series would be the third week you're right. You're right. So you, it's five. It's five yeah, weeks. Yeah. You're right. It's five weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My apologies. Yeah, yeah. And then and then G2, let's just say again, G2 won the split. They would win the split on like the 8th, the Sunday, the 8th of, uh, nope, not the 8th of October. They would win on the 10th of September. Yes, yes. And then they would have the Swiss stage, which they would already qualify for, wouldn't start until play-ins was over. So it'd be a it's week like later. Twentieth October, something like this. Yeah, it, actually, it'd probably be more like the 17th or something. Yeah, so like five still. weeks, five weeks. Yeah, so each team has about give or take a month 
uh, from when they end to when their next set of games will begin. Which is so, which is uh, completely fair. But I think the main issue for me, right, is that yeah. last year we got Giga Grift and you all, did. like you got Giga Grift last year. <laughs> yes, and I, I do like, remember. I, I think this is not talked about enough because we had so little time. And then it's like Planes yeah. was Giga Tide 2 and then you have Media Days on every stage and then we had... Bro, we, we tested positive for COVID on three, on all three lakes. <laughs> We posted, yeah. got COVID in Europe, we got COVID in Mexico, and then we got COVID in New York. Like, I, I quarantined worldwide, dude. I'm going to get one of those fucking maps where I like, yeah. I write it down. But it's like, we, oh my God. we finished on 11th September. And, yeah. and then we, we had to start playing like 25th or something like this. And then we, we took a couple of break days, and then we had media days because it's like, or we need to make money, right? We need to like fucking yep. make photos with the jerseys and all that good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then yeah. it's like, oh, we have. And COVID. then there's the riot media days. Yes, yes. As well. And, and then it's then, like uh, we arrived on location. DRX arrived one day, day later than us. We were supposed to scrim them. We couldn't scrim them because they didn't get access to their PCs because they're not tested positive. And it's like all a lot of shit happens, you know. It's like <laughs> yeah. it's like uh, world is a very tough event to coordinate. So it's like. You need to be like water. You need to be ready for all kinds of shit. And our PCs didn't work. Like we had a bunch of issues, you know, it's like fair play, yeah. you know, everyone goes through the same shit and you need to be able to deal with that. We didn't deal with that good. Like we were not a strong team, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. we went two and four and it's like you, you already limped your way into that. Yeah, yeah, it's like we, 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 we were bleeding out of every fucking crevice, you know, it's like we were fucking Louis Shanami Azir. Thank God T1 gave it to us, you know, like in no yeah. research. <laughs> like, like Exodia versus T1, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. But I, I'm concerned yeah. about this next year. This year it's fine because I agree. It's like there's some diminishing returns. It's like it's not like Golden Guardians right now or bootcamping in Korea. They're pumping iron, bro. Hyper, <laughs> hyper fucking performance chamber. Like I don't think that's going to be like the difference maker. The fact that well, the other thing right is the thirteen eighteen patch right is normally a world patch. The point eighteen is normally the world patch, right? Mm -hmm. It's either 17 or 18. It's one of those yes, two. Yes. Um, and so even if you got to Korea now, you're still practicing two patches behind. Or what, 16 just released now? So like, you, you, the one of the big things for me is that it, even if you go to Korea, like there's obviously a lot you can still learn in Korea. Yeah, but yeah, we literally had the conversation earlier about how metas can define the success of a team. Yeah, yeah. And the biggest advantage that anyone can have in a world championship is being able to get access to the patch as quickly as possible so that you can start figuring out what is strong, what is weak. And then you come in week one with that prep prep, prep. because I've, I've said this before and I will say it again, Korean teams, while they have historically always been the best group stage team, the way that you beat them is in week one of worlds because they are not the fastest region when it comes to adapting to new things. But the second that they know what they need to play, they will, they will fix it. So week two, they always like, you can check like it's 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. They have all these 3-0 weeks in week two. Week one is when they're a little bit shaky. You know, that's yeah, when yeah. G2 beat Griffin. Like, obviously there was the year with Gen G that you were at, but Gen G was just bad that year. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but like, you can, you can find a bunch of different examples yes, of yes. where like, but even like T1, I think they went two and one, right? Rather than uh, one and two. I think it was two and one because it was EDG that went zero three or was it one two? I forget the exact results of. What well, do you remember the results of your group last year? Mm. Was it a three way tie at two and one actually? I, I think basically C9 lost all three games in the first week, and we yeah. went two and one. And I believe, I think I think EDG beat T1 in the first one. I think. I think EDG was 3-0, but I might be remembering this wrong. And then I think that in the rematch, T1 beat them, and also in the tiebreaker, they beat them. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, but I just, you know, like T1 then leveled up in the second week. DRX, I think, also then went 3-0 in the second week. Like, Korean teams are just very good at, like, they might not be the most creative necessarily in the, like, testing a bunch of new stuff on a patch and like doing stuff that like a G2 will do and bringing out a Cogmore. But the second they realize, oh, Cogmore's strong. Okay, you can play it. Give yeah, us a day. Yeah. I, I, would <laughs> say, I would say Korean teams are fucking good at making key players very uncomfortable. You know? Yeah, it's like the, the G2 fair. thing, when they targeted limit, Korean teams are very good at that. It's like, I, I remember that one time, right? SK Gaming, 8-0 in Europe, dominating. They play IEM versus Cool Tigers. 
Cool Tigers, yeah. Band 3 ADs, Caitlin Graves. <laughs> I else. remember, Lucian. yeah. Caitlin Graves, yeah. Lucian. These 3 ADs are out. They lose, SK are beaten. They come back to Europe, everyone continues yeah. those three bands. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like the, the Korean teams, when it's like, same, I think T1's run, when they beat, for example, uh, RNG, they recognize Ming only can play melee champs. We're going to make his melee champs garbage. And then Ming was <laughs> not the same player. To be fair, of That's course, fair. LPL fans are going to say, yo, they had COVID. I get that. You know, that was rough. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just as, just to, as the example, you know? Yeah. But various, I mean, like, we're, yeah. we're approaching seven. I just wanted to let True. you know. I'm That's ready to fair, talk man. with you forever, but. I it's just yeah, it's always know. a fun man. No, it's fair, man. It's always a great chatting with you. I appreciate you I inviting me on. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, bud. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I guess we'll call it here, and then I get when we get closer to worlds, we'll have a lot of off season. So I'm yeah, sure we'll meet back up again in the near a little future. Top twenty list. A little top twenty list. Oh god, no. Yes. <laughs> no shot, man. Oh god, I'm getting. <laughs> I'm getting Mickey on the list, just so you know. I'm getting him on yeah, the list. Like, <laughs> it's like a little Mickey, a little Berserker, and yeah. that's, maybe we'll a little find Caps a finds a way to we'll tickle himself a in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, my man. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry, guys. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll have the JDG players. We'll have. We'll put the shy in there for Kedro. Like, we'll find a way. You know, it'll be. A, we'll cook one up. It'll be <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different approach. It's like how can yeah, we yeah. make the most fans happy without. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah that's that's a great take and like who do a lot of people like fake it we can get faker on the list right we can the list. <laughs> but there's a lot of people yeah. who hate faker so what is the perfect oh, number it's yeah, where's the number? <laughs> is, is a nine a good number like not too high not too low yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man it's a pleasure jacob thank uh, you for having me on thank you very much brother all the best to you yeah Take All care, the best, man. yeah. Take care. What's the outro here? Typically, what do we say? Is there like, uh, oh wait, no, I know that. Hey, everyone, you're probably watching on the YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, Yamato, he's been doing a lot of co-streams recently. If you head on over to twitch.tv forward slash Yamato Canon, you can check out all that content and you can use your free Twitch Prime. If you're not using anyone else, why not check to our man who's making content on the daily? He's yes, going to be on the show. He's going to be on the show. And I promise you, on the show, he's even going to be making content for you yes. backstage. He's mm. going to be doing it, man, just for you, right? So make sure you yes, hit the subscribe baby. on the YouTube. Hit it that subscribe on the Twitch. And make sure you head over to x.com to check out all of his amazing <laughs> X posts. Repost, he's got some crazy, yeah, post. all those. <laughs> he's got the craziest X posts over there, all right? So thanks for tuning in. I will see you on the next one. Yes, baby. If you're sneezing in this video, bless you and bless your face. Catch you on the flippity flop. It's good to douche. <laughs>